Hi everyone, welcome to the Sip and Spin. I am the not tipsy spinster today. In my glass is a Moctini. I have been crafting non-alcoholic cocktails this week and I have been having so much fun that I wanted to share some of my creations with you. In the glass today, this is a take on the Victorian cocktail, the Bees Knee. And what I did for this one, I found these, um, this amazing product. These come as a set of three or you can buy them individually. It's Seed Lip. It is basically a non-alcoholic gin. And the one that I'm using today is Grove 42, which has a citrus base to it. It reminds me so much of Hendrix Gin. It just doesn't have the alcohol in it. It's really quite lovely. And into that, I mixed honey syrup. Honey syrup is very, very easy to make. All you need are uh, one part honey to three parts warm water. And it sort of thins out the honey and turns it into a syrup without really destroying the complexity and the flavor. So I mixed the Grove, 20, the Grove 42 and some honey syrup. Put it in, it should be a coupe glass, but nobody has coupe glasses anymore, so I just went with a little bit more of a bell-shaped wine glass. And then, for those of you that are aware of Fever Tree, Fever Tree is a small batch artisanal company, and they do a lot of different waters. They have flavored tonic waters, they have sparkling water, they make ginger beers. The two tonic waters that I've fallen in love with are this one, which is elderflower, and then the other one is Mediterranean, and that's a little bit more robust. So uh, I will do another show with a Dirty Martini, no, I'm sorry, a Dirty Moctini that uses one of the other seed lip products in the other fever tree. Now, the other two things that I just want to showcase and talk about real quickly, I've put uh, some of the cocktails that I've made with these up on Instagram. One of them is Route 23. These are infused simple syrups, and you can use these in actual cocktails, but I'm finding just these with a little bit of sparkling water makes an absolutely amazing drink on its own. And I'm sure you've all heard of the benefits of apple cider vinegar, and I um, usually drink apple cider vinegar a little bit every day. Bragg's makes a really good just basic apple cider vinegar, but twisted shrub. Shrubs are also vinegars that are infused and frequently used in craft cocktails. Twisted shrub took it one step further. These are fruit and herb infused apple cider vinegars. And these with just a little bit of warm water and lemon make a wonderful morning or before bed cocktail. So those are just a couple ways to enjoy the flavors and the complexity that you get with a really good cocktail without all of the alcohol. So stick with me. I'm going to talk a little bit today uh, about literature, books, and some resources as well as some fun new events that are in play and that are happening this year. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Oftentimes new spinners are curious about where they can go for resources and magazines are a great place to get information. The two that I wanna talk about today are Spin Off and Fly. Spin Off is published by Interweave Press been around for many, 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 many years. You can find it on just about any news stand. It is your standard interweave publication. Each month they have a number of different themes that they showcase. They talk about styles of spinning, fiber, and there are projects included in them. One of the things that I like about Spinoff is that it, you can get it both in print pretty much everywhere, as well as you can get online subscriptions. So for me, for the last couple years, I've been getting it on my Kindle. One of the things that I would say is a con to spin off is they have a tendency to repeat their themes. And 
Admittedly, there are only so many things that you can talk about in the spinning industry. Spinoff does do a nice job of showcasing uh, new artists, indie artists, uh, where to get fiber. Their advertising is wonderful. However, I felt like after about a year of getting the magazine, I was starting to see repeat articles. And for me, that kind of took away some of the learning. I, I wasn't learning as much as I wanted to. And so I stopped getting the print. Like I said, now I just get the online, which it's a nice resource. And I switched to Ply Magazine. Ply is a relatively newcomer to the magazine industry. It's run by Ply Magazine. That's the publishing company. It's Canvas. For those of you that know or are friends of Facebook, um, have gone to Ply Away. This is a uh, publication done by J.C. Box Faulkner, who is a compendium of spinning knowledge. Ply Magazine is available both in a print edition as well as online. You can get both. Here are the things that I really like about this magazine. For one, it feels more like a book than a magazine. It's printed on heavier weight paper in the front, and I think probably the biggest pro to fly over spin-off. And you can disagree with me, and I, I totally get it. But for me, I love the fact that this magazine solely focuses on one theme for each issue. And they talk about literally every aspect of that theme. There are great demonstration pictures in here. There are projects included. And the reading is really accessible. I like the fact that it's a little bit larger print. For me, it makes it just a little bit easier to read. And the issue that I'm showcasing today is issue number 18. This is the semi-issue that's going to lead into the spinning that I'm going to be talking about today as well. And so if you've got the opportunity, these are the two magazines that you should be subscribing to or, yep, I'm going to go ahead and say it, if you can only subscribe to one, my recommendation would be apply. So check them out and if you have any comments, feel free to leave them down in the comments section, uh, things you love about them or not. Ultimately, these are just two great resources to have if you are new to spinning or if you want to take your spinning a little bit further. I also want to talk about two online publications. One is Tiny Studio out of Australia. This is a patron you can pay. You get uh, the magazine as well as access to the videos. It is another wealth of information that kind of goes along with the idea of slow crafting. The last one is Hand Spinning News. This is a publication that you can is strictly online out of England and it also has a wealth of information, patterns, and just uh, good information universally. So I showcased the two from the United States, one from